So if you're like me, occasionally you browse a website like ArtStation and you see an image you like and it, you like it so much that you open Photoshop and you try to, you know, get back into art. You know, you start drawing and trying to come up with new ideas and just, you know, nothing's coming out. It kind of feels like scribbles. So half an hour later, you give up and you stop. I want to present a method that's going to kind of be a solution to that problem. Um, basically, the idea is you're going to take this image that inspired you and break it down into its most basic format. And I'll explain what that means if it seems kind of nebulous. But the idea, the general idea is you want to have a template like this that breaks each part of this image down into its requisite parts, its most important features. Okay, And I'll put this template in the description uh, along with some other things. Um, okay, so this process is, I think of it as a kind of uh, systematic creativity. I think there are two major kinds of creativity. There's spontaneous creativity and then there's systematic creativity. Um, and spontaneous creativity has a place, right? Um, Scott Robertson has a really good YouTube video about using kind of special brushes he has to create random brush strokes on his page um, in kind of a crazy pattern. And what he does is he zooms in on that page and kind of finds compositions that he likes from these randomized little splotches of paint. So uh, spontaneous creativity is, is not worthless, right? I think it's useful. But when you just can't get started, when you cannot find something to create, and but you feel like you want to draw something new um, or paint something, I think this systematic approach is really reliable. So I'm just going to present this method. The general idea is you're going to take this image and you're going to break it down into this notepad file. And what I mean by that is uh, you're going to ask the basic question, uh, what does this image showcase? And you've got a set of categories here that you want to answer. What is the perspective it showcases? What's the time of day it showcases? And also, I have a helpful notepad file that I'll also put in the description of categories for art, okay? And you'll, you'll notice here, for perspective, there's a corresponding section. For time of day, there's a corresponding section. And uh, it's essentially a big list of possible things you can replace in this image. I'm not sure how else to explain it. I'll, uh, I'll kind of go into more detail. So first, let's answer the question, what does this image showcase in terms of perspective? Well, I'm not quite sure. Off the top of my head, I want to say a two point. Um, if you notice some of these landscape features, they seem like they have a little bit of uh, cross dimensionality to them. So I'm just going to put two point. It's not so much relevant for this image. That's something we can change. That's free to change. Um, time of day, I'm going to say sunset or sunrise. I'm not sure. So uh, the time period, OK? Well, this doesn't look like a time period I can rattle off off the top of my head. So I'm going to go ahead and consult this other notepad file. All right? Is it early Earth dinos? Well, kind of. It's similar. But I'd say it's more fantasy. This is clearly made up kind of world. Granted, it's very grounded in reality. It's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's a fantasy time period. So, um, and this notepad is really helpful. This, this file here, a list of categories. When I can't think of anything, I'm just going to consult this and find the one that is closest to the description that I think is most relevant. Um, cause that's what this is about. It's describing this image. It's breaking it down. Next, we're going to look at the climate. I'm going to answer jungle. Um, <clears throat> I think jungle is the closest I can get out of this list of categories here. So I just put jungle. 
Okay, and then topography also means something pretty specific. I mean, what is the major landscape scale, right? Uh, is it a set? Is it on islands? Is it on a coast? Is it on a peninsula? Is it on the mainland? I don't know. Actually, for this image, I can't tell. It could be a set of islands. It could be. It could be toward a coastline. It could be in the mainland. For this image, it's not so relevant whether we know or not. So it's not the highlight of the image. So it doesn't really matter what I put here in this case. I'm just going to put mainland. And then lastly, we're going to define three major categories right here. And I actually have these already typed out. So, um, but essentially, the idea is to ask the question, what does this image showcase in terms of categories? Okay, and if I'm not sure what I mean by categories, you can consult this. So we're going to ask the question, what is it showcasing? Well, to me, it's pretty obvious that the highlight of the image is this creature. Um, so I'm going to say it's a creature. So that's what it's showcasing. That's a primary showcase. Secondary showcase, I'd say, is the landscape. Um, and then the third, maybe I can't think of what is the next kind of tier uh, of emphasis. So I'm going to go ahead and consult this notepad file in the category section here. And I've already put landscape, uh, trees and plants. Is that is that what this image showcases? Well, a little bit. If you notice down here, there are trees and plants. But I think those are more complementary details. Uh, they're not so much the focus. So we're going to go ahead and skip past that. And, and what's more is you could say that these kind of help make up the landscape. Uh, so it's kind of redundant. Is it a prop? No. Uh, is the next step in emphasis a vehicle? No. Creature, we already have that. Is it a character? Well, I think so. I think this character is the next point of interest, right? It's, it goes creature, landscape, character. Um, and maybe you disagree. This is this process is completely subjective. It's up to you to define what is important about this image. Um, you know, maybe you think the character is not so important, but the sky is more important, right? This background, and so you would plug in a sky box in this last uh, section here instead of a character. But to me, I think the character is kind of a the next place my eye goes after I look at the creature in the landscape. So. So yeah, now that we've plugged in these categories that make up the image format, okay, um, now we need to break these cat each of these categories down into three concise descriptions. All right. It's important to describe these uh, because we're going to be replacing each thing that describes the category with something else. Okay, and I'll kind of expand on that in a minute. So uh, the idea is, so for this creature, um, I'm going to ask the question, we're going to ask one of two questions. What does it consist of? Okay. Or what is its, its or its? I don't know. What is the purpose of it? Okay, um, and by answering these questions, I'm going to start to define these subcategories that describe these main categories. Okay, these things in the brackets are main categories. These are the things we want to maintain because if we change these, we'd be getting a completely different image, right? Um, so we're going to maintain these, but these subcategories are going to be changed later on. We're going to come up with our own. Um, and so I'm going to ask the first question, what does it consist of? Well, uh, it's a bird of prey. I'd say it's a, it's a bird. That's one way of describing it. Um, and then I would say it has cat-like influences, right? A long, like, a long tail and a, a you know, cat-like legs. So I'm just going to put cat-like influence. That's what it consists of. Um, and then if I've exhausted this first question, what does it consist of? If that's really the extent of it, is a bird of prey mixed with cat-like influence? Then I'm going to ask this next question, what is the purpose of it? Okay. And 
I think its purpose is that it's a mount, right? He's it's meant to have a writer write it. So uh, that's the next thing that describes it. That's the last thing I would say. So I'm going to put that as a mount. Um, okay, next we're going to describe this landscape. Uh, well, I see lots of mountains and cliffs, so I'm going to put that down as the primary focus of the landscape is, are these big cliffs and mountains. That seems to be the uh, point of emphasis in this category. Uh, next, uh, I'd say it's the waterfalls. That's the next landscape feature. And then lastly, I would say it's the these rock stacks right here. Um, these seem to be a more unique landform than a, just a mountain. They seem to be very specific, very vertical, and have little tops on top of them with bridges, you know, leading across, you can see. So uh, I think that's the idea, is you're trying to break down these points of emphasis. So um, I'm going to put rock stacks there. Lastly, what does our character consist of? Well, he seems uh, to have a tribal theme. Um, another description of him is that he's dark-skinned. And then lastly, he seems to be either a scout or a warrior or a flag bearer. I think I'm going to put flag bearer um, because this is quite literally what he's carrying. So, uh, right, that's that's the last of it. We've described this image uh, pretty concisely. So, um, now that we've answered these questions, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste all of these down here so we can come up with our own ideas. So we're going to delete these out. Um, and now what we're going to do is while maintaining these main categories, because again, that's kind of the whole point of this process is to get a concrete format, which isn't copyrighted. I mean, you know, there are lots of images you'll find out here that have the same, that share the same format. Um, creatures and characters and landscapes as part of it, a an image showcase uh, is not exclusive to this image alone. So uh, all we're doing is just getting this format and, and maintaining it, right? Because we want to create something similar. We want to be inspired by this image to create something different, but with a similar format. We're going to go ahead and look at bird of prey. That seemed to be the primary focus. So listing our things here in terms of importance, we're going to uh, list alternate characteristics that correspond with each of these descriptions. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and open up my category here, or my art categories. <clears throat> and in section one, which is uh, image fundamentals, we already defined what the perspective and all these things are uh, as a description of this image. Now we're going to ask uh, what makes up the image we want to make, right? Well. Maybe we'll maintain the two-point perspective. And time of day, maybe instead of sunset or sunrise, we make it nighttime. And instead of uh, a fantasy period, I'm not sure, right? Maybe we should define our creature first. Let's do that, actually. So, all right, instead of a bird of prey, now we need to think about an animal we want to use. And I'm just going to go with uh, a monitor lizard something like that. Um, and it's up to you whether you want it to be the same scale, or bigger or smaller. These are all creative things you can figure out after the fact. Um, uh, and then next, uh, cat-like influence. Instead of cat-like influence, we're going to do some other animal, maybe like an armadillo or a turtle. Uh, something that complements the fact that it's a monitor lizard, right? Or that at least part of it, the main part of it is that it's a, a kind of lizard. Um, but you can also mix it up, do something interesting, maybe give it antlers, I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to do armadillo. And for this third part, uh, instead of a mount, maybe we trade that out with uh, the, the, the creature being a uh, kind of a guard animal, right? So he's like on a leash or something. And he's, uh, he's kind of been trained to be an attack animal. Now that we've got that done, uh, we're going to move on to landscape. And 
now we need to change cliffs and mountains to something else. We need to figure out what we want our landscape to consist of. And um, things kind of trickle down from this main design, right? This main point of emphasis. Well, what kind of environments does, would it make sense for a lizard to be in? Well, I don't know. How creative do you want to get, right? This is up to you. Um, I think I'm going to do, instead of cliffs and mountains, I'm just going to do a valley, okay? Um, and I mean, I guess you could say this is a valley here, but it's not really the point of emphasis, right? It's more about these peaks that uh, is kind of the the point of this image, okay? And I want to stress that we are not copying the composition. I mean, it's up to you. I don't know if this is... I feel like it's probably better for people like me who are learning to just try to come up with our own compositions, okay? Like our own spaces. I'm not going to just literally go in, erase this, and replace it with my creature, right? Um, I don't know how useful that would be, but uh, the idea is all we're doing is copying the format, right? The the contents that make up the image and replacing it with parts of our own. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and decide on a valley. Okay, and uh, instead of cliffs as the primary focus of the landscape, the secondary focus of the landscape uh, being waterfalls in this case, I'm going to go ahead and replace with, uh, let's say, hoodoos. And hoodoos are these kind of rocky spire type things, something like this, right? Uh, you know, a little more prominent, maybe these make up a bigger part of the image, something like this. Um, and, you know, if I can't think of anything, well, what do I want to put in my image with my valley, right? I can consult this. I can consult my list of landforms. And if you don't know what any of these are, like a, a Cuesta or an exhumed river channel, you can just type that into Google. Um, this is just a list of things you can consult, um, a convenient list. You may not get what it is immediately. You know, I expect most of us know what a canyon is or a cave or dunes, things like that. But some of these more complex ones, you can just type into Google if you're trying to find out how you want to create your image. So I'm going to go with hoodoos. And then lastly, a complementary detail, right? This third point of emphasis. Instead of these rock stacks, I'm going to go with maybe some grottos in the sides of the uh, in the sides of the valley okay and they can be little side details they don't have to be uh, extremely prominent um, but that's up to me I guess I mean it's, it's up to you how you want to establish your image so all right and then lastly for our character uh, instead of him being a tribal theme um, maybe we make him like a, a uh, a, de a nomad or something like a desert traveler because this guy seems to be part of a bigger pack right these complementary creatures here in the distance it creates a flow in the image which is cool but uh, he's part of a tribe and we're going to do something different we're not going to try and copy what this image is right we're just going to copy the format right the fact that it's a character and we're going to choose nomad instead of a tribe tribal guy lastly or next to lastly, uh, instead of dark skinned, uh, this is a toss. I mean, this is just completely in the air what you want to do with a feature like that. Um, I'm just going to keep them dark skinned. And then lastly, a flag bearer. So instead of a flag bearer, I'm going to think maybe a traveling salesman or a merchant. Yeah, a traveling merchant, a kind of a nomad. Uh, and he's got a guard animal, right? He's got this monitor lizard armadillo thing, has armor, can survive in a hot climate with valley, you know, uh, hoodoos and grottos and things like that. And then, uh, so now that I've established these main categories, I'm going to go ahead and define the time period. Well, it seems about as fantastical as this, so I'm going to put fantasy as well. And then climate, instead of a jungle, I'm going to put desert. Okay. And it doesn't have to be sand necessarily. It could be kind of a grassy desert. There's ways of doing that. And then topography. I'm just going to put mainland. It's not crucial to the image. So 
All right, and we've defined our categories as creature, landscape, character, and that's it. This is the whole process, is taking the format, these main categories, porting them over to an image I want to make, and then making alterations so that it is my original image. And again, I want to stress, the point is not to copy the composition. I'm not going to have this image open on my other monitor and, you know, copy it and just place, right, replace my uh, monster in this image. Okay, I'm going to make my own composition. I'm going to do all the hard work of creating things, but I'm just taking the successful format, right? And I'm not starting from complete scratch. I've developed this idea by defining these subcategories either by thinking about it, right? I just immediately off the top of my head, I thought lizard. Uh, or if I can't think of anything, I'm going to consult Google or this, this list of uh, categories here, right? There's all kinds of things I've listed here. There's military buildings, there's you know, kinds of buildings there are, there's kinds of vehicles, there's all this kind of stuff. So that's about it. That's what this process is. It's pretty straightforward. I've got a concrete idea I can start with. Uh, I would have loved to have this in the past. I don't know if this is just common knowledge if, if people just do this implicitly when they're creating new images, but if you're stuck like I get stuck, um, I hope this process helps you. So that's about it.